Hello, uh, my name is Stane Simmons and I work with Turk and I'm an applications engineer here. And today we're gonna be going over how to set up your BL modular system. So we have the uh, BL20 and the BL67 line and we have multiple gateways uh, overall depending on what system you need. So these two here are BL20 uh, gateways and this one here is our BL67. Um, these are IP20 rated and these are IP67 rated. Um, yeah, uh, today we'll be going over primarily, or we'll be using the BL20 Econ uh, line, just because that's the latest and greatest and will be the easiest to work with. So uh, let's set these off to the side and uh, here we go. So uh, to start off, uh, I'm gonna do a factory reset on the gateway uh, just so that if, uh, to show to you that uh, everything that I'm doing will work out of the box. And also for those of you that are here for troubleshooting, um, you can do this as well to make sure we're all on the same page. So uh, for the econ line, uh, the way that we do that is, first we gotta rem remove the faceplate to get access to the dip switches and set everything to zero. So all, the, all of them to the left as, uh, as seen here. And uh, we're gonna switch the mode uh, dip switch, which is the second from the bottom, as you can see here. Um, and so it's gonna be this one, and then we're gonna set the uh, dip switch number six to uh, be on. So it's gonna be the one, two above it, and it's gonna be, oh, come on. Dip switches are a little finicky. Um, so that, so it should look like this. And then when we go to power it on, um, we will see a lot of flashing lights because uh, it's going through some resetting uh, on itself. So you'll see here the uh, IOs is flashing red um, and it, they'll all be going through different behaviors. So uh, once we've been here for about 15 seconds at this point, uh, we can go ahead and cycle power. Um, takes a minute. Uh, set all of our dip switches back to zero. And so at this point, the IP address of the gateway is gonna be set to 192.168.1. Dot two five four, uh, and this information will be in the manual. Again, uh, link in the description below. So, um, depending on how you want to set your IP address, there are, there are a couple options, um, but we'll go over those in a moment. Uh, for now, just know that that this is the the def default IP address, and uh, we'll be changing that in a bit. Do, do, do. So, we'll replace the faceplate, and now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add our slices. Oh, actually, we're gonna we're gonna turn it on first. All right. So uh, now you'll notice. Um, that uh, we have the gate green gateway light and the rest are red. We don't like red lights. So to solve the first issue, uh, we're gonna attach our slices because that fast flashing IO, uh, IO's light means that there are no slices attached. So uh, we have now attached our slices and the flashing behavior has changed. So uh, the alternating uh, red and green flashing on the IO's light is gonna be the most common issue that you see uh, with the BL20 system. And basically all it's saying is that, hey, um, there are slices that I wasn't expecting on the rack. So in that case, um, because it's fresh out of the box, it's not expecting any slices, so any additional slices, it's gonna yell. So in order to do that, to, to solve that issue, what we're gonna do, remove the faceplate again, um, and we're gonna set the conf, whoops, config button, which is the very bottom switch. Um, again, this will solve 90% of your issues. So if we just go ahead and uh, cycle power, um, set the config button to on, turn it back on. Um, you'll notice that there are, again, uh, similar to the factory reset, there's gonna be a lot of flashing lights everywhere. Um, again, the IOS light is flashing. And oftentimes, oh, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but the, all of the slices flashed red for a quick moment. Basically, it's going through its paces um, and verifying everything that it's doing. And when you're holding this config button, um, you do want to hold it for 15 to 30 seconds um, just to make sure it goes through all of the diagnostics um, that it needs to for all the slices that are on it. So uh, it's been long enough, so let's go ahead and cycle power again. Turn that config button off. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to put it back in because we're gonna be taking it off again here in a second. Um, and then we cycle power. And now uh, no more alternating flashing IOs. This is good. Um, all right, so uh, configuring it on the BL20 Econ gateway is very straightforward, just flipping that config button. Uh, but on the other two gateway options that we have, uh, it's a little more hidden. 
So on the, we'll start with the other BL20 uh, option. So you have this plastic faceplate. Um, in order to reset it or it's, uh, to can reconfigure it, re to reconfigure it, uh, flip up the plastic shield, and then in this hole, um, I don't have anything on hand to poke at it, but um, get your favorite small screwdriver and just poke it and hold it down for again that 15 to 30 seconds um, that we did for this uh, for the original one. Um, and again, should make most of your problems go away. On the BL67 line, uh, we have a similar thing. We have a faceplate here. Uh, this one's a lot more difficult to pull off because it has gaskets and whatnot on it. So I've uh, done that already. And you just take that, lift it up high enough. Whoopsies. Um, there we go. So lift it up, swing it out, and then press this button here. So uh, you can just hold it down with your finger. You don't need to get your favorite screwdriver or anything like that. And again, hold it for that 15 to 30 seconds that we did um, for the other gateway. So now let's, uh, moving our way down, we, we see that we have this error light. Um, and that's because one of the um, slices is uh, throwing an error. So in this case, it's this analog input card. Um, and so we can go ahead and fix that. But uh, to fix that, we're gonna, need be, we're gonna need to set the IP address of the, uh, well, we'll need to find and then set the IP address of the gateway. So to do that, uh, we're gonna take our ethernet cord and plug it in. Boop. And uh, then we're gonna pull up uh, the Turk service tool. Uh, there will be a link to download that in the description below. Um, and this will be the, the easiest way to find all Turk devices on your network. So uh, we go ahead and pull it up. And oh, still have it from last time. So first thing you're gonna do is press the search button uh, and that will go out onto whatever network it's on and find all Turk devices. Um, and we can see here that uh, it is currently set to, again, 192.168.1.254, because um, again, that's the default whenever you do a factory reset. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go onto the web server. Uh, you can just go ahead and double click on that IP address. Um, a potential issue you might have uh, is after you have factory reset, there might be, uh, since the 254 is usually what things default to, um, you might have an issue uh, running into it or being able to find it. So, uh, but we'll, we'll change the IP address here in a little bit. For now, uh, we're looking at uh, getting rid of those arrow lights. So uh, if we go onto the gateway diagnostics page, we can see that on analog uh, one, you're seeing measured value out of range and wire break. Basically, uh, we have nothing hooked up to here. So it's, it's saying, ah, whatever sensor I'm supposed to be seeing is broke. And as a result, it's throwing an error. So uh, for this example, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to deactivate those diagnostics to make the red lights go away. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go into the parameters for the slice that we're looking at. In this case, again, that uh, the analog input, click on parameters. Uh, and you'll notice from the jump, uh, there is nothing that we can, that we can change currently. Um, so uh, to be able to change it, we're just going to log in as admin. The password is password. Um, and that will be the default for all Turk devices um, if you need to log in and change anything on the web server. Um, so now we have access to all of our inputs. Uh, and for this slice in specific, there's a lot of different options. We won't go over those. Um, but we do have the deactivate diagnostics. So we can just turn, the, turn it off, turn that off. Slice one and three are the ones that are giving us issues. Um, but you'll notice the red lights are still on even though I've changed the drop down. So what we need to do is we need to push the data to the BL20. So scroll down, click submit. And just like that, the red light goes away. We have no errors um, because we got rid of all of the things that tell us what the errors are. Um, ideally on whatever system you're using, you would either deactivate the port itself um, or uh, just use it. Use it. Um, all right, so uh, for the final, Ooh, whoopsies. Uh, for the final issue, uh, we have that red bus light. Uh, basically, it's mad because we factory reset. It's still at the default address. And now we're going to go ahead and change it and go over what the different um, options are for setting our IP address. Um, so uh, as you can see here, we have the manual open to page PDF page 27. Um, and again, the link to that will be in the description. Um, so you can pull up this page and look at uh, what you want. So the recommended setting uh, for this uh, is first setting it via PGM um, and then setting the IP address via the dip switches after the fact. 
So uh, to set it, get into PGM mode, uh, we can pull out, uh, we have, so for the BL20E with the dip switches, we'd set dip switch, dip switches so that it would equal four. So in this case, it would be dip switch one, two, three, four. So it'd be the fourth dip switch uh, on here. So it would be, uh, we need the power cycle first. So uh, one, two, three, four, we switch that on. <coughs> And then we turn the power back on. Um, so now you'll notice, oh, come on, that the bus light is flashing green because we have, uh, we are now able to move it out of its default um, IP address. And on the other gateways that we have, uh, instead of having dip switches, we have rotary dials, uh, which are hidden under one of the plastic plates. And you'll set those um, according to this right here. This, uh, this table is also in the manual. Uh, so you can reference it there as well. Um, yeah, so uh, in this case, we're setting it to PGM, so we'd set the dip switches to 500 on this one. Um, we won't go through that. But that, that is the way that you'd set that on our other gateways. So now that we have set it to PGM mode, we can go ahead back into Turk service tools, um, search just to make sure that we're still looking at the right one. Do, 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 do. Oh, aha, I forgot. So. Uh, it's currently now set to 192.168.1.8 uh, because that is, that's what I told it to do. So if you set the um, dip switches without setting the mode button, you're, you're just setting the IP address to whatever value it is. So again, it can go up to 254. In this case, I just switched to eight, so it switched over to eight. If we, need, if we wanna go into the different modes, uh, the first thing we need to do is switch is press or sorry switch the mode dip switch. So in this case, this is it's the second one from the bottom, just one above the the config one that we used earlier. So doo -doo -doo -doo. there we go. So we set that and actually uh, doing it wrong. So we do want to switch the one above it. Doo. So now I've set the um, dip switches to be able to set equal to four as it's as it's called out in the manual. And I have set the mode um, switch to tell it that it's now in PGM mode. Um, do, 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 do. So, yes. <clears throat> so now we can go back into Turk service tools. Um, and it should keep that same 8.8 .8 IP address. Um, thinking, yeah. So now it still has that same IP address, but now we can go ahead and change the other octets as well. So if you're not in mode, you should only be you should only be allowed to change the last octet. Uh, but now that we're in PGM mode, we can set all of the other ones. So we can set it to like 192.168.2. whatever, um, or whatever network that you're on at the moment. So uh, we're going to keep it the same just because that's that's how we have ours set up already. All right, we have our um, subnet set up and everything, um, just to make it a little easier for demonstrations later. Um, so this is where you would change it. Um, and then, so once you've set your first three octets, then what you wanna do is power cycle, turn off mode, and then set your dip switches to whatever uh, final IP address that you want. Um, so in this case, do, 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 do. takes a little while to start up. And so now, when we pull up um, Turk service tool, um, you'll see that the IP address is now set to that original subnet that we would have changed uh, to whatever you want. And it's set, uh, the final octet is set by these dip switches. And so the reason that we recommend this is because the PGM mode um, sets the first three octets and then the uh, dip switches set the final octet in a way that isn't easily changed. So because it's controlled, the final octet is controlled by the hardware. If you have any power cycle or anybody pushes bad configuration data to your BL20, um, then that, that final octet still isn't gonna change. Um, yeah, so that's how we set the IP addresses. Uh, and again, there are a couple different ways to do that. You can set it via DHCP, boot P, or combination PGM DHCP, if that's what you want. Um, and again, all this is called out in the, in the manual, uh, so feel free to read that. Um, and then, do, 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 do. oh, and, uh, so yeah, we've parameterized via web server. Uh, we have gotten all the red lights to go away. Um, 
And yeah, so now you should be ready to go with your BL20 system. And uh, for any for further troubleshooting guides, uh, we're gonna make another video that will go over more in depth um, how to specifically troubleshoot uh, either different slices or different gateways in, in a way that is uh, useful for you. So um, yeah, uh, until next time, uh, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, can hope Turk works well for you.